welcome to Box Free with Stephanie. Today I want to show you how to make some basic foods with simple ingredients from scratch and I hope you discover cooking Box Free is fast and delicious. So let's cook together. Today we're going to make little birdie rolls because they are super fun and really like adorable. So um, we're going to make them for kind of the holiday season. It's a nice time to have them. So I'm just going to grease my hands. I'm going to reach in and get my dough out of my bread machine. Um, I love my bread machine for making beautiful dough like this. Um, this is just a total plain white yeast dough. Um, really nothing fancy about it. I'm just going to move this over here. Um, and I'm just going to get the air out for just a minute here. And I'm going to do oil on my counter instead of flour because I don't want to add more flour because I don't want it to get any drier. Um, so this is six ounces of water. Hang on, what did I just feel? Something funny. Um, six ounces of water, one teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of butter, and two cups of flour, um, two teaspoons of sugar, and one teaspoon of yeast. So this is a two cup, what am I looking for? Um, a two cup amount, and that gives me usually 10 little birds. And I don't make them very big or anything because, um, I don't know, birds aren't big and you just kind of want them a little bit smallish. So what am I doing? I'm trying to make 10 here, which this is not, my division isn't working out. Um, so we'll just see. I basically am making 10 um, similar size balls and then we're going to shape those into our little birds. So one, two, three, four. Five. So I'm going to just kind of get all these kind of ready and then make sure they're actually the same size. Then we'll make our birds. Um, and I have never done this with kind of like any grainy or different dough besides just plain old white yeast bread. Um, it should work. I mean, it's just a yeast dough and you're just shaping it. And that's the awesome thing about yeast breads is you can shape them into anything. So um, I saw these birdie things and I was just like, oh my gosh, I got to try it. And they are super adorable. Okay. So this one's too big and this one's too little. So I'm going to steal from here, but otherwise they all kind of look the same. Don't they? Do I have, I have, how many do I have? I have 11, really? Three, six, nine, 10, 11. Okay. I really don't want 11. Well, I guess I can. We'll just do 11. I guess that's fine. I was going to put like four, four and two, but I'll do four, four and three. Or, yeah. Okay, so, um, and I'm also gonna grease my little pan here because I don't want these to stick. And you could use like a spray non stick thing or parchment, I guess. I never use parchment paper very much, but um, you could. Okay, so let's move these over here. What you're gonna do is roll this into a, um, like a stick, I guess I call it a little dough rod or pretzel rod and you want the ends as thick as the middle. Okay. So you want it, I don't know, what's that? Eight inches. And then you flip it over. Um, oh, these might be too small here. Boy, I wonder if these are going to be too little with just this little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These are going to be very small birds. I don't think I like that. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to divide this into 10 little bitty pieces. One thing I do like about yeast dough, it seems very forgiving. You can just manipulate it. Oh, this is kind of a big one and change it. And then it all still seems to work out beautifully. So we're going to just do it this way. I don't know, like these are going to double in size and stuff, but for some reason that felt really little to me, um, which who knows, it could just be the day, but maybe I had my stick too thick, but you need it to be and you always kind of got to squeeze them in like that. Okay, so maybe I just didn't have it long enough, but I don't know. I like the look of this better. So you take this one and you flip it over, but you keep a hole and then you bring it up and stick it through the hole and that's your face. Okay, and then this is your tail. So if this looks kind of goofy, then you just have to smooth it out. Well, actually, this is going to be flattened with the fork. Um, so here's my head. So then you just take this and you make a little teeny beak like that. Like that's about it. I mean, they're really quite simple. 
So, I don't know, that looks kind of like a bird, right? Then we'll stick him over here. Okay, we'll go to our next one. Um, I have discovered that I think it's good to have the head really like in the middle and kind of up on top of the other, of the body or the chest, you could say. Um, I'll show you what I mean on this one. Okay, so maybe I'm doing more like a good 10 inch. Okay, so I'm going to flip over again, keep your hole here. Then this comes up on top. This becomes your head. Okay, and you don't really want your head like over here. I mean, I guess if you do, that's fine. I prefer my head to be kind of more like in the middle. So there's um, a chest and its head is on top of its chest, but whatever. They're just birds and it's just buns. So you can kind of do whatever you want to. Um, and sometimes I do like this little pointy, I mean, I don't know, you don't have to spend too much time on the beak, but you do want it to look like these guys, you know? So I have my little models here. So I can see what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, and then can you see these that are sitting there? So I'm just going to keep going on making these. And I don't know if you guys want to sit and watch, but I think I will um, come back to you when I get all 10 of them on my tray. So we'll do one more as a, as a sample here. So you whip it around. Oh, and see, I have a little air pocket in here try to get that out if I can, if I see that, because I don't want it to like pop up and make my bird body look silly. Okay, so again, you just stick it through, and then this is your head. Kind of make sure your head is not over your body. Your tail is sticking out nicely, basically in alignment with your head. You don't really want your tail like over there, because that's not how they are. They're like completely in line. So you got to make sure your head is lined up with your tail. That's it. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm almost done with my last two. I'm just going to show you a couple little other tricks. One trick that I just did is um, heated my oven up. I hit 350 and then I heat up for like two minutes and then I turn it off just to make my oven about, I don't know, 90 degrees or 85 or some kind of nice warm temperature so I can basically put it in the oven and let it heat up. Okay, so this one, my head feels a little bit small, so if that happens, you just basically push it through more and then you can kind of squish it down to give you like a fuller head. Um, so again, yeast dough is very forgiving. And so you just want to manipulate it, you know, until it looks like a nice head for a bird. Um, and if it's wrinkly or anything, you can, well, you could do kind of water, but I've never done that, but, um, you can usually just smooth it out with your fingers, um, so that you don't have like a wrinkly bird. I mean, these guys, you could say their feathers are wrinkles, but you don't want that in your beautiful little birdie roll. Okay. And then I also kind of like flatten my ends and kind of roll them like that to get rid of the wrinkles. Um, but it's just kind of a, so I don't know, that's the size of like a middle finger, I guess, or a finger. So again, you just stick it through and you can pull this up and you can manipulate the twists and the turns and everything. So let's switch it this way. So now this is kind of, looks like it's kind of bent. So I'm going to just get a little more coming through and then push it back and it makes, um, like a fatter head. I guess is what I'm going for. Cause you don't want like an itty bitty head, you know, like, like that looks too squished. So then you have to basically make it nice and round Then make sure your body's nice and round. Okay. So there are my 10 birds. Okay. Now I'm going to take a little fork and I just push down on their tails to give them some depth and like real look of feathers. Okay, then when these double in size, most of the feathers will kind of be like gone. They disappear. Um, so for the ones that are really bad, I just redo it. But look at those. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Ah, oh, I think they're adorable. Okay, so I'm going to put them in here with nothing on them. I usually do like a cover so they don't dry out, but I don't want to because they're so delicate. So I'm going to let those sit for like 40 minutes or so. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll put an egg wash and we'll bake them. All right, we'll be back. Hello again, we are back and our little birdies have risen and I think almost doubled in size. Um, 
Some of them, their heads are a little bit small. This one and this one, I kind of lost my beak. And on most of them, I have lost my tail feathers, which does happen quite often. So what I'm going to do is kind of fix them up and then I'm going to do an egg wash. So first of all, I want to make this one have a better beak because I kind of lost his beak on that. And I do want them all to have a noticeable beak. So I might do a, quite a bit of them here because even when they bake, they're going to kind of puff up a little bit more. And so I want their beak a little more visible. Okay, so now I'm going to redo this, but it's a little bit, oh, see these are, I don't know, maybe my oven was too, they're so dry. It's not really going so hot for me. These are like, wow. Yeah, hang on one second here. Where's my little knife? Here it is. Um, so I don't really want them to smash down like that. So I'm going to just kind of cut little feathers in them because all you really want is your feathers. But I'm, I'm like pulling away from the, um, the body, I guess you could call it. So I have a feeling my oven was too hot which can happen. I mean, things happen when you're baking, right? So I just make it work. You don't need to have very many feathers on your tails. You just need to have some, in my opinion. I mean, in a perfect world, of course, they would look like Martha Stewart, right? And everything would be like, absolutely perfect. And they'd be just dandy. But I think that looks pretty cute. Okay, so now I'm going to do an egg wash on them because I want them to be kind of shiny. Um, and so, I don't do egg washes very often when I make baked goods, kind of because it makes me nervous to let these things rise up and then brush them. Like I'm always like, oh, I'm going to wreck them. So I do it about, well, I don't know. I just do it about maybe half the time or something. I don't know. Because if I don't do it, actually, I should do some without the egg wash so you can see the difference. Um, because it makes them brown. I mean, the egg wash makes them browner and shinier, but I also think they look just fine kind of without it. So I have done one egg and beat it really well to make sure my egg yolk and my egg whites, whoopsie, are all combined. And then I'm just going to add one tablespoon of water just to kind of thin it down. And I'm trying to make sure I don't spill on my little birdies over here. So I am doing it this way. Okay. So now very gently, I am going to brush on my little egg wash. And then this also will kind of seal your little bird together. Um, you know, I mean, we don't have any, it doesn't look like our birds are going to come apart here. Um, but on some pastries, you can get like a separation when you have, um, like the folds and the seams, I should say. The seams are what I'm really talking about. So you just do this really gently, you know, like I'm hardly putting any pressure on my little birds. Because if I were to do too much, then it would just like smash them right down. I'd lose all my lift. And then I seriously would not be having a Martha Stewart day. I'd be having a reality of living in the world day, right? Where things don't always look so perfect and I don't want like so much egg wash on them that it looks like there's an egg on there. That's kind of why I think the water helps. And then I guess if you use milk instead of water, it turns it like darker. So if you want really dark birds, um, you could do it that way. But I don't know. I just do it this way, but I'm going to leave these four back here without an egg wash just so we can see the difference. It'll be like America's Test Kitchen or something silly like that. Okay, this one has this like brown thing on it. That's kind of weird. Oh, there it is again. Okay, it's gone. It's showing. Oh, there it is again. Okay, what is that little thing? There, I got it off. Okay, so my oven is like at 270. I'm going to put these in. I'm a little bit nervous. All this egg stuff around here. This is probably don't do the egg wash. It's like one more step where I could mess something up. And these look just fine. But I don't know. Oh, actually, here I'm going to do. Um, I just don't want this egg to... Oopsie, did you see that? I just made a dent in my bird body. 
because um, I wasn't really paying attention and I like squished right into it. So that's why maybe if I had a bigger pan, if I wasn't so crowded, it would work out. And maybe if I was a Martha Stewart person, everything would be just perfect. You'd never know that I squished my body. Whoopsie, I just think I just did it again. <laughs> maybe I should just stop. Okay, we are just gonna put them in the oven because they're gonna be really cute no matter what. Okay, I'm gonna put them in the oven. I'm gonna bake them for like 12 minutes then I'll come back and check and then we'll see how they're looking. We'll be right back. They are done baking. It's been about 12 or 13 minutes and I forgot to say when I was rising them, are they, or did I say that? They only rose for like 25 minutes. Okay, let's pull them out and you can tell me what you think. Oh my gosh, they're just so cute. Okay, so see how my egg wash is all like on my um, pan and that should be okay. But so these are the egg wash ones and see how shiny they are. And these are not the egg wash and they're fine. I could have left them in a little bit, you know, more to get them more golden, but um, I don't like my bread to be overdone, I guess. So um, there's their little tail and their little beak. They look so cute. I just think they're a really fun bread product instead of having just a clover or a pretzely looking thing. Um, so my egg wash is sticking to my the edge of my bird a little bit, which shouldn't be a big deal. But um, and my feather, whoopsie, on my tail end up sticking pretty good. You know, like um, you know. Some days when you do stuff, it just doesn't turn out the way you expect, right? So like, these are probably the worst tails I've ever made. And like, I don't really know what I did different or what I did wrong today. So something was not um, going my way. Maybe my little birds here were like, you're not gonna make us. Cause I mean, they look fine. Like you get the idea, but I'm gonna say that these are my worst feathers I've ever had. Um, so that's kind of a bummer. Because, of course, you know, I'm doing my show and it would be just beautiful if they were all looked just like these guys. But, you know, look at that. I mean, it's not like too far off. This one lost its beak a little bit. So let's see, my perfect one, I would say, is this one. Because he has a nice size head for his body. His beak's a little bit like long, you could say. And all my beaks are a little bit smaller today. Um, so I just didn't have the right um, ratio of everything. Oh, and look at here. You can see a teeny tiny bit of my egg there, um, which luckily doesn't look bad. Um, but that's why you don't want to put too much egg wash on because in the little seams, you can get that pooling and then it bakes and it's yellow and it looks kind of goofy. I'm sure you could like actually take a little knife and like pick it out of there, but I'm not gonna do that. Okay, so we have one more step but I have to let these cool off because if I put the chocolate in to make the eyes, it'll just totally melt and then they'll be like crying birds, which would probably be appropriate for today's um, results with my wacky feathers, but we're gonna let them just cool off. So I'll be back in about five or seven minutes once these are cool and then we'll add the eyes and wrap it up. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, we are back and they are cooled enough to show you a couple ways to make the eyes. Um, I use mini chocolate chips. Um, people, whatever, online say that you can use like little pieces of raisins or if you have black licorice or currants or something, but um, I like the chocolate chips because then they're flat and my goal is to get the chip flat with the surface of the skin or the head. So you can see how these guys, their eyes are like way down here, kind of not like up on top. So you don't really want to put them in the top. You want them kind of lower. And um, sometimes I don't even put eyes in them because I feel like then I can wreck it. Like if I don't do it in the right spot, then they really don't look like Martha Stewart birds. They just kind of look like wacky, kind of crazy birds. Um, but all I do is I take a, a little knife and I twist it um, to make a little hole. And then I sometimes blow out the little crumbs. Whoopsie. And then you just push it in. And then, see now this one's sticking out. So that's how I know I have to make my hole just a little bit bigger because I want my, I do want my chip. Oh my goodness. I want my chip to be like flush there. Okay. So 
So we got a one eye bird going on. Let's get two eye bird going on here. Okay. There he is. Does he look kind of like my little demos here? A little bit, right? So now I'm going to do my second one. So again, you just take a little paring knife. I don't know, maybe you could use a toothpick, but I like how the paring knife is sharp and kind of cuts the bread as I'm twisting. And this eyeball seems really low. <laughs> See, like, <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm just not having creative juices today the way I should, right? Like, I should just go not do anything creative for the rest of the day. But you know what? It's like it's fine. If you're having this for your family, they're going to think they're just adorable. Okay, see how this one's a little bit too far over. This one's really pretty good. I just went a little bit too far down. So now you have your little birds. And then if you have like a nice basket, you put all your little birdies in your basket to serve them. And oh my gosh, it looks so cute. And so um, my little tails, I think are just fine. You know, like, like I said, these are probably the worst tails I've ever seen, but they still give you the nice shape. And then when you're looking at all these little birds, oh my gosh, they're just so cute. I mean, they're just really fun. So let's just eat a little bird real quick. We're going to break off his tail. Um, and then they are kind of nice to eat because you can start with the tail and you can, oh, I was going to put them on this plate to show how pretty they look like this. Like, look at that. It's so cute. Mmm. Mmm. And fresh bread. It's always so yummy. Okay. So I'll do the rest of the eyes in a minute. Okay. Those are our little birdie rolls. I hope you, oops, this one doesn't have a tail. I forgot I already ate it. Okay. <laughs> this is, we'll just like do it like that. Um, thank you very much for watching Box Free with Stephanie. I hope you like the show. I hope, hope that you make birdie rolls. And um, they even look better than mine today because mine are a little bit whacked out. But in the end, they still look adorable. And your guests will be like, oh, love it. So have fun making birdie rolls. I appreciate your time watching the show. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.